Well, in response to our exclusive interview yesterday with the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden, we're hearing tonight from a senior advisor to the Trump campaign. CBS 4's Jim DeFeedy spoke this afternoon with Mercedes Schlapp. Here's a portion of their conversation. Joe Biden was obviously disastrous in talking about his policies. I mean, you go down the line. Let's just take Cuba, for instance, where he's already saying that he's going to back tr backtrack, go back to the days of the Obama-Biden policies, where President Obama praised the Castro regime and, uh, and basically said that they're, they're doing you know, great on the issues of education and healthcare, despite the fact that we know in Cuba, uh, the human rights situation has gotten worse. Uh, and the fact that Cuban people remain oppressed under this communist regime. And so it sounds like Biden is more aligned with Bernie Sanders when it comes to Cuba than it, and, and accepting these socialist ideas and being soft on a dictator. And what we know about Cuba is that the communist regime in Cuba is propping up the Venezuelan dictator, Nicolas Maduro. And so you're basically supporting these dictatorships in uh, the Caribbean and in Latin America. The president seemed initially to support the idea of having a stimulus that would help the states and local municipalities deal with this crisis. He seems to have backed away from it, wanting to make it a partisan issue, saying that we're not going to be bailing out democratically, poorly democratically run states. Is this really the time to play politics with with these states? First of all, the president has worked very closely with so many of these governors and has actually gotten high praise for the work that he's done and able to, for example, you look in the case of New York, where the president has been able to get, uh, you know, the na naval ships up to the coast of New York to ensure that the New Yorkers are getting the ventilators they need. He's focusing on these hot spots uh, to ensure that we're, they're getting the necessary testing and the rapid response that we need at this moment in time. So I think that the president has worked very closely and the vice president with these governors across the states. Now, the reality is, is that the Democrat governors love to spend a lot of money. And yes, they are known for one thing. They are known for raising taxes. And so the question is going to become, are we going to have to pay for you know, the, the expensive spending situation that these Democrat governors push for. Florida has spent hundreds of millions of dollars in terms of bringing in personal protective equipment, doing testing, doing all the additional expenses that other states are also experiencing. Are you suggesting that Florida will not be able to uh, ask the federal government for relief from some of this money? That Look, they'll get caught up in the fight with the Democratic governors? Look, I think that Governor DeSantis actually, he met with the president um, and they had a very productive meeting. And I think obviously the governors are going to keep talking with the administration in terms of their needs. There's been a lot made out of the fact that the president has pulled back in the last few days from participating in the coronavirus task force briefings after the incident uh, that happened where he talked about disinfectants and the rest. Uh, did the president squander an opportunity to talk honestly with the American people during these press conferences? Should he have just let the scientists do it? You know, I do have to say, when you watch these press briefings and you have some of these reporters, and I have great respect for you, Jim, but many of these reporters ask the most ridiculous questions, uh, you know, uh, and really attack the president, you know, it, it's really not helpful for the, for the overall cause of ensuring that the people are being informed of what the administration is doing. And so, I, you know, for me, I, I'm glad the president goes up there and talks for two hours. That is very different from Biden in the basement who could barely put a sentence together. You experienced that in your interview when he couldn't even give a direct answer about his son, Hunter Biden, and his, Hunter Biden's connection uh, to the Chinese company. I mean, he really struggles to even get through a live interview. So I'd like to put, you know, when you, you make that comparison, you know, President Trump will stand there for two hours and go into detailed conversations about what the administration is doing and his leadership and his bold action. Compare that to Joe Biden, who can't even, he can't even handle a live interview because he can't even put a sentence together. Okay, Mercedes Schlapp also told Jim DeFeedy that while the president is eager to get back out on the campaign trail and hold rallies, he won't do anything like that until he is sure it can be done safely.